How fast could I actually get if I optimized my running form? When I started running, I began dealing with injuries. The two biggest ones were in my knees and in my hip. At first, I thought it might be overtraining. But after speaking to my trainer at the time, I realized it might be my running form. And if I was ever going to run fast and injury free, there were three distinct things I needed to fix. Within one year after making these changes, I went from running an 18 minute 5K with pain to a 15 minute 5K without pain. At my peak, I was running 150 kilometers per week without any pain whatsoever. So in this video, I'm going to show you the three key things I changed and teach you two ways you can assess your own running form so that you can start to run fast and injury free as well. There are two ways to assess your running form and today I'm going to show you both. The first one requires a camera and a treadmill and the second one you can do from the comfort of your own home. So let's get inside and film my run. When you're filming your run, you want to get a side view, a front view, and a view from the back. You also want to film at the highest frame rate possible. It's easiest to do on a treadmill, but if you got a friend who can film you while running outside, it's even better. Because some people tend to adjust their run form just a little bit when on a treadmill compared to an outside run. After you have filmed your run, it's time to plug your camera into your computer to see what's going on. So the first thing I want to take a look at is my stride. The point of contact of my front foot, I'll just take a freeze frame and transport it into Photoshop. You can use any software you like, but I just like to use Photoshop for measuring angles. Now I want to take a look at three angles from the side view. My hip to knee angle, my knee to ankle angle, and the angle of my foot compared to my lower leg. The best biomechanical way to run is to land underneath the center of gravity here. If you're a distance runner, you want your foot to relax when it's in the air just until it hits the ground here where it needs to tighten. So in the beginning, I had what's called an overstride. Let me just show you here, uh, which means that I landed my foot in front of my body and I needed to find ways to land closer to the center of gravity. Now for me, the way to do that was to increase my strides per minute at the same pace. So instead of running 160 strides per minute at a five minute per kilometer pace, I would run about 175 to 180 strides per minute at the same pace. When I did that, I would start to shorten my stride in front of my body, which meant that I would land better. And by better, I mean biomechanically better. I also had problems with my hip extension and activating my glutes when running. And since your glutes are the biggest muscle in your body, you want to activate those when you're running. So I started doing muscle activation exercises before every run. I would mostly do glute bridges and lunges with a focus on glute activation. Now let's take a look at the frontal view. We want to take a look at the hip here. You see, you want to make sure you don't have any deficiencies that align with your run form. The most common ones are weak hip abduction and hip flexion. And the reason for my knee and hip pain was an overflexion at the knee and a weak hip abduction. To fix this, I started doing specific exercises like run jumps and plans and lying hip abductions. Lastly, we want to take a look at how our feet hit the ground. Here I'm looking to see if my foot hits the ground like your feet are designed. We want to avoid a heel strike and land midfoot and then roll from the outside of the feet towards the big toe and then take off. I have actually taken a running form test on a force platform as well, so I can show you how my feet are hitting the ground exactly like this. Don't think too much about the butterfly here. That's because it also measures when I'm in the air. But this is how I hit the ground. So you see from the outside and then towards the big toe. But you know what? There's an easy way to see exactly how you hit the ground without needing a force platform. Let me show you. Now this will only work if you actually run in your running shoes. But if you take a look at the bottom here, you will see where they have actually been most worn. So you can see on my shoe, it's around here. You can see this is where I land. I don't have a bunch of a uh, worn out shoe here. It's more new, but down here you can see it's worn out. And if you look at the toes as well, you can see right here is where I have my lift off. I also have some here. So this way you can actually see how you're hitting the ground and you can also see if you have anything in the heel. I don't have much because I don't feel strike anymore. But there's another thing that's extremely fun when you look at this and that's to look right here because 
if you have a hole here at the big toe, that means that you're lifting your big toe when you're running. And well, there's no point in doing that. And most people actually get some shin splints by doing that because they are constantly lifting their foot when they are taking their feet off the ground here. If you sort of lift your big toes and then you flex your foot, it's called a dorsal flexion, but if you do that, with your feet as well, then that's just a lot of strides where you keep on activating the front of your foot. So if you see that hole on the top of your shoe, that means that you have to work on your motor control of your feet and your toes so that you can relax when they should be relaxed and you can uh, sort of tighten and flex them when they should flex. It's also important to note that different shoes sort of cater to different running styles. So a shoe like this with a big heel, it's very difficult to start running a forefoot or midfoot if you're used to being a hill striker and then you've got this big massive hill drop so if you want to practice if you really do a hill strike if you want to practice going more to the mid and front foot then you should get something with a bit lower of a heel drop that will force you to land more midfoot or front foot but besides changing my biodynamics, doing some muscle activation and choosing the right type of shoes, I did one more thing that made a huge difference that almost nobody does. And I don't know why, because it just makes you so much faster. I started doing five minutes of technique drills before every run. I focus on coordination and muscle activation, but you should really focus on your deficits. Now let's go get it.